and good evening everybody and welcome back to the developer dynasty series here on our wolverine studios twitch channel uh it has been a couple of minutes since we did our last one after our uh, final releases uh last season and we are back and ready to get going on the new season of wolverine studios products uh, our draft day sports line uh, as always this year will be kicking off with draft day sports pro football 2022 and that is what we are here to talk about tonight we have the developer uh, of this fabulous game brooks with us brooks say hi to your adoring fans out there hey everybody and uh, it's good to see uh, some guys in the chat already breeze uh, gm games chris stealth 74 narlins 34 Good to see you guys right off the bat here. Um, we are really excited uh, for this year's games. You know, we, we've made uh, some, you'll see some very big visual changes in just a second here as I pull up the uh, the main menu. And Gold Guy 2045, thank you for the new follow. Um, so we're going to go over just some of the stuff that we're going to touch on this week. Uh, some of the new things that Brooks has added to the game this year. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep running this back on, on Wednesdays and, you know, talk to you uh, and get your ideas, get your feedback. Uh, as you know, always, we appreciate the, uh, the followers and we appreciate the subscribers to our channel. And there's always the option to subscribe for free. If you have Amazon Prime, link it to your Twitch Prime account and you get a free sub every month. So thank you to everybody who uh, has done that. And uh, let's get going. I'm going to pull up a league I started, and the, the very first thing you're going to see is a much different look. Uh, this year we have changed the UI format. The, the format's still going to be the same. We're still running on that great AU platform. Um, but after a lot of feedback last year, you know, through the developer dynasties, through you know, other outlets and, and things like that, um, we decided that maybe it was time for a, a change in the UI. So uh, you are looking at what the UI will look like this year. We've gone away from the heavy um, white or light background and we've decided to go with a darker UI this year. And I think um, I think it's a really nice uh, a really nice change, a really nice look. The colors that we use for you know for things really uh, will pop I think more so this year uh, than last year, and it's just um, you know an evolution of you know what we've been able to do with the the AU platform and you know and Brooks, this is one of the things I was really excited about, especially since you know I'm sort of the the UI guy here on all the games. Uh, you know, what do you think about the new dark look to the the UI? I, I think it looks great. I think you put a lot of work into it. The uh... The colors are much easier on the eyes, especially, you know, some of these games can suck you in for hours at a time. And I know that white can be a little bit glaring, especially with folks with large monitors and, uh, you know, big 4K screens, 27, 30, 49 inch wide screens, right? There's there's just a lot of real estate and that, that much white on some of these screens was, it was problematic at times. So I, I welcome the change and, and uh, I'm looking forward to the feedback on, on, you know, where it works and where we may need to, to tweak some other things. But yeah, it yeah, I, so far. I agree. I see right there in the chat. It'll be a lot easier to handle at 3 a.m. That's you know, that's uh, that's a, an awesome compliment for us. You know, to to hear some of that. You know, that these are the kind of games that can suck you in till you know 3 a.m because you're like well, okay one more week one more season one more draft get, you know one more over and over and over again and before you know it it's three in the morning so um you know i i love to hear feedback like that and this is absolutely something that you know this change to the darker ui is something that you know came from the community it, it was you know people asked for it you know Oh, off and on over the years since the last time we had a darker UI, uh, but th there really was a lot of ask for this uh, between last version and this year. So it's something that I was um, I was really happy to work on and be able to provide that ask. And you know, it, our philosophy is we you know we always try to listen. We always try to take the feedback, and you know, and, and try to give you you know the best game possible. 
because you know you guys are the ones playing and and we listen to what you have to say and, and things like that so i'm excited to uh to bring this out uh, talon thank you for the subscription there talon does fantastic uh work huge member of our community so thank you for that talon I'm going to go over to the strategy page because I want... Oh, there's, we have more? We're not... We can ship this, right? <laughs> yes, no, there's more than just the UI changes. So I, I think that would be, you know, everybody would be pumped up about not only the UI changes, but uh, all the new features that, that you spent many, 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 many hours working on since the last version. Um. We're going to take a look at the strategy page here because uh, there's been a number of things added here. So, uh, so Brooks, why don't you uh, tell everybody a little bit about uh, you know the, the changes here that we're looking at with the different scenarios and uh, you know kind of what brought them about and how they're going to impact the game this year. Yeah, one of the things that I had gotten feedback on, actually for several years now, is the difference in the game mechanics between short distances and long distances and even you know first and ten was one that we added recently so in order to try and make game planning a little bit better or allow your your playbooks to be tailored for for better more more granular um scenarios we went ahead and added medium distances in the play calling screens so now you'll be able to better tailor what playbooks you want to run and what personnel you want to run uh, specifically around short, medium, or long. So that you have a, um, that middle gray area where it was, you know, it was six yards long or six yards um, short, you know, you know, six was kind of pushing it, seven was kind of in that gray area. So now we have, you know, four yards and less, five to or less than four yards, four to seven, and then basically eight and above uh, create those long ones so that it, just the medium distances are more that four to six yard range so you can better call plays that way. Um, I think that will allow people to a little bit more freedom on how they set these things up and, and how they get their, their run-pass ratio tweaked. And I think that's a, a really good change. It's, you know... The details are really what make our games, you know, so fantastic. And as Maverick just uh, posted, the online leagues are going to love that edition. Giving you as much detail and control as possible, you know, I, I think that really is a big thing for the player. Of course, you know, you can always use the, you know, the the computer options to handle things you don't want to, which is another, you know, fantastic feature of our games. But you know, the, the more detail, the more control we give the players. I think that's, you know, that's always something to strive for, Brooks. I, I agree to a point. This was one I kind of resisted for the longest time because I, I don't want to leave beginner players out of the conversation. And some of these screens can be a little bit daunting. But now that the UI is, is cleaned up a little bit better and we have better organization of where these things are, we're, we're able to go back in and, and add a few more without you know, making it too tedious for the end user. Um, and by having all the coaches and the game plans and the automation, uh, that all definitely helps for beginner players if they want to just skip the whole thing. But that way, yeah, I mean, this is, this was a, a change that I think will be welcome and give, give people more options and um, should make the results play a little better, um, look a little more realistic. So that, uh, I'm glad to add that in. And, uh, you know, for, for the benefit of everybody who's, you know, new to this or just tuning in, uh, you know, we are still working. This is a developer dynasty where we're not showing completed games or, you know, so some things could change. We still make adjustments based on your feedback. I might run into an error screen here and there uh, or a screen that isn't completely converted over to the new UI, things like that. So, but the, the point of the developer dynasty series is, to let you know what we've been up to, to get you interested in the game, and to be able to show you in real time, you know, what we're looking at and, and give you the opportunity to uh, provide feedback and provide, you know, further suggestions for us. 
and I, I think the point about you know new users is well taken too because uh, I, I know there's games in this genre that have been around for a long long time and you know for the players who haven't been there from the start you know it is a little you know overwhelming and you know and we don't want to be that we don't you know we want to to walk that line where it's lots of options and you know still welcoming to to new players um and for guys out there if you do tutorials on youtube or stuff like that we'll post them we'll post them to our youtube channel we'll post them on you know on twitter and things like that so uh, if you're a veteran and and you want to to do something to help out you know kind of the new guys in the community um you know we certainly appreciate uh anything like you know anything like that that uh that you guys in the community want to do I, I, there's yeah, a couple I'm, of questions coming through there, Brooks. Um, yeah, I'm writing down some some notes, like I always do. Just <laughs> any kind of good suggestions we get in chat or or via our Slack channels or you know the forums, we we definitely want to get them and capture them. And some of that stuff will make it into the game, and other stuff will will go into future patches. But we definitely um, enjoy getting the feedback on this stuff. Um, for Berserk sixty two asking about the default third and long. Um, run pass ratio i i didn't change it too much from what it was um we can certainly look at at tweaking those numbers i i have some some great helpers in the in the beta periods that will kind of run through those and make sure our ratios are still you know pro football realistic um they ratios to a certain extent are based on coaches and based off of some randomness so there may be some teams that have a, a little bit more running or a little bit less running depending on what their overall um coach uh, ratings are um we'll we'll take a look at that as we get towards the end of the first access that's when we usually do most of our tuning and and tailoring the a the uh engine to actually generate the results that we want but i added it to the list so i don't forget um raiders elite is asking for labels which i wholeheartedly agree with there's a lot of places in the ui now that are complicated enough that we can add more of these little info tags and pop-ups and things like that so that um we can let the user know uh, without having to go look up on the forum or without having to you know, to ask a friend, they'll be able to hover over some of these little tooltips and get get better information right there on the screen. I think that's something I strive for every release is trying to add more of that in there and make it a little easier. Um, let's see, yeah, Cybex is is talking about the difficulty sometimes. Yeah, I mean, if if some of these things were easy we we would have done them already in a lot of cases uh you know the easy stuff is easy and and we do it when we can the hard stuff or the stuff that gets a lesser priority you know sometimes those take a release or two before we before we get them in uh, i know last year for for the 21 version we spent a lot of time just building up the ui so that you know future iterations like like pro football 22 um we're less learning how to use this new platform and more taking advantage of it, which we we've done now. So yeah, some of these things are easy. Some things we, we plumbed last year to make things possible this year. And, and yeah, we should be able to get some more, more fun stuff in there as we go. Um, and Berserk is asking about the AI teams be altered to pass more on third and long. So one of the things we did in pro football 21, uh, last year's version was I actually went and did a, a little bit of research with the help of our beta team and actually found, you know, run pass ratios for all of the different scenarios. And the game was pretty well tuned to hit those. Um, does that mean it's always that way? No. I mean, the, the coaches affect things, the players affect things, the scores affect things, all of those affect what actually comes on. But it, uh, uh, it was tuned that way last year, and you know we'll we'll try and do it again this year. Just to make sure that they're up to realistic standards. Um, Mav is asking about blitzes and the defensive play calling. So I might need 
to catch up with you offline and ask what your ideas are there. We are trying to get the blitzes into the play. Um, so you can put them in your playbooks, if that's what you're talking about. Um, if, you're actually, if you're talking about playing out the games, the blitzes should be available there without people having to, to mod their XML file. So that stuff should be good. Um, yeah, and then Talon moved on to the, the contracts and the financial stuff as I was clicking around, and that's that's what I wanted to move over to next. So there's been a, you know, a, a, there's been a constant ask for some different financial options. Um, so I'm gonna I pulled up the uh, the new screen here on the options page for financials. So why don't you let everybody know kind of what some of those changes have been? Yeah, so I, I reworked this contract. Uh, th there's actually two major pieces of code that we had to change to get to get this to work. The first was doing further disconnects of salaries to overalls. Um, and in order to do that, I changed the overall formula so that internally we use um, basically a proprietary version of the overall. But anywhere that the user sees the overall value is going to be um, custom to them, to their to their settings. And in in, it'll either show the default one that we have or it'll show what they've overridden it to using their view custom overall settings. Um, settings. Um, but it's purely cosmetic now. There's, it doesn't drive salaries. Um, in most cases, it won't drive anything in the UI or anything in the underlying engine that, that we may have been using before. So you don't have to worry about um, this overall affecting your gameplay. This, is, uh, this has a couple of interesting byproducts. One is, since it doesn't affect salaries, now I could move to a new salary uh, method of by position or whatever. But also for those people who want to increase the fog of war and maybe do a one to 10 overall rating or, you know, a 2080 or a one to 80 or a one to 20 or a one to five, whatever you put into this calculation, um, we'll show that overall everywhere and it won't affect any of the other parts of the game that may have in the past um, kind of been tied to it. So that was a big step to, to make sure that overalls were broken out. Um, and then the second big step was the contracts. Like instead of you know, making the contracts be tied to whether you were a 60 overall player or an 80 or a 90 or whatever, now I can just go straight off by position. So, uh, you know, quarterbacks by default are 500K as the minimum and 45 million as the max, which is kind of an NFL uh, parallel at the moment. And so quarterbacks that are in that 95 to 100 OVR range are going to ask for, you know, 30, 40, 45 million um, because that's the way this screen is currently set up by default. So, and that goes all the way down. So I tried to find realistic values to put in the screen. Obviously it's customizable for whoever wants to, to change it for their leagues. Um, but this should really help all of those leagues that wanted more realistic uh, NFL style contracts and a wider range of quarterbacks making 45 mil without, you know, a 99 rated punter also asking for 45 mil. Um, so I think this will help uh, a lot of people uh, with the way the the financials are set up there. Yep, I think that's a um, really really smart addition to this year's game. And I know there's there's been one or two guys who for you know a year or two of the versions have said to me that um, you know they didn't like the financials they you know they didn't just what you were talking about um, you know and I think this is this is great because it, you know I don't deal with that on on the basketball end really because in, in basketball I mean players have positions but even you know the game itself is getting more positionless and you know if, if the best player you know he could be a, a shooting guard he could be a power forward he's going to get paid you know the same amount of money that's not true in football the quarterback's going to get way more money than the punter and the kicker, you know, even though um, you want an overall rating that says this guy's a, you know, a 90 punter means he's an excellent punter. It doesn't mean he's the same as, you know, a Tom Brady or something like that. So I, I think this is a really, really smart uh, addition and way to do it, Brooks. Yeah, I would have loved to have done it sooner, but, you know, there's only so many things that we can do in, in a version of version, and this finally got 
to be a, a large enough thorn in my side that I kind of agreed with everybody that it needed to be reworked a little bit. And our clientele kind of shifted a little bit too. I mean, in the beginning, people didn't care as much, but as we make the game, you know, larger and larger and larger, you get more feedback, more opinions, um, more use cases. A lot of people really like setting up modern NFL style leagues and they kind of wanted the, the salaries and stuff to match. And I, I can't blame them. I, I agree with that. So we, uh, we definitely did that. Um, get caught up on a couple of questions. So yeah, I agree. Talon, the having high rated fullbacks wanting max money was, was just wrong. So that should be taken care of now. Um, Mav is asking about restructuring contracts. Um, I've also mentioned the restricted free agency stuff that's on there. That's uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. Restructuring contracts. We don't really have that in the works. Uh, you can extend players and obviously it'll replace their contract with your new extension. So you can kind of restructure that way if the player agrees to it, but there's not uh, any kind of new restructuring um, functionality planned at this moment. Um, Berserk has some feedback on the dark background. Um, I think Gary's done a lot of work trying to get the, the colors the way that he wants, but I'm sure he'll look for feedback and uh, I'm sure he can try some different colors out if there's some some ideas there on on how best to you know get the contrast right, get the ratios right, get get the colors the way that he wants to match the branding and all that. So I'll, I'll let him handle that. Um, I'm just reading through the rest of the comments. Yeah, Radiant, yeah, long time, long time fan of the game. Uh, unfortunately, he's a Cowboy fan and therefore <laughs> has to play a game to make him win. Um, uh, well, you know, one I'm thing sure. you, you said, you know, too, as you go through this, uh, I'll give you a chance to, to kind of look him and do the talking for a minute. Uh, you know, you, you've said, you know, the, the game's base has expanded. And, I mean, that is absolutely true that, you know, Wolverine Studios has continued to grow each year. And, you know, as we do, I, I credit you guys out there listening and watching this. Uh, I credit you guys with that, you know, as well as the, you know, some of the things that we've done. Because I know there's people that have, have you know, showed a friend or when we send something out, you know, on, on Twitter, or, you know, Facebook, they retweet it, they share, they try to get more people in. And, and, you know, that's our way of growing. We don't have, you know, a million dollar budget to go do TV commercials and, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, we can't compete with, uh, you know, the, the AAA studios in that direction. But, you know, we make a, a game that if, if you're a franchise mode guy, and I've, I've already seen a lot of complaints online about a certain other game that I won't mention, uh, that, you know, some things haven't changed just like they never do. Um, you know, I, I, this is this is what we do. We do this and we take your feedback. We look for, you know, things that you want to see, how we can make the game better each year. And as that player, you know, pool expands here, as we get more and more, you know, people coming into the game, um, you know, it, it's we get better ideas. We get more feedback. We get a wider array of what, you know, people are looking for. And we've been able to improve the game you know, every single year. Yeah, I, I, I mean, every year there's a big feature or two that we try and tackle. And then there's a slew of, you know, player feedback that we try to incorporate. And sometimes we get a bunch of it in and sometimes we have to push it out but we do try and blend in you know our personal desires for the brand our personal desires for the game um with you know what the user feedback is and you know if it's something that we agree with and it's the direction we want to take the game then more often than not we get those things in and if it's not then you know we still write those ideas down and and keep them because in the future you never know i mean the the difference of of opinions change and uh you know, as we see what the, the landscape of football does, it, sometimes some of these things make more sense now than they than they may have five years ago or whatever. But we we definitely want to try and keep it keep it fresh and new and and uh, but at the same time still adhere to, to the brand and the the goals that that we have for the game itself and the whole suite of game. Yep. 
And you mentioned restricted free agency um, a, a couple minutes back. Do you want me to, to go to a specific area here where you can kind of talk about? Yeah, so that's one of the newer features. Um, there was a request from the community to, to add restricted free agency. It was actually asked for years ago. And to be honest, I didn't understand how it worked well enough to even try and implement it. Um, this time around, we, you know, we, we talked a little, we put our head together and, and came up with, with kind of a plan for restricted free agency. Um, so the way it'll work is if during the season, similar to the way the franchise tag works, if you have a player that's, that's in their third year of, a, of a league service, um, but they have an expiring contract, then they will fall into a, a, an RFA pool, restricted free agent pool, and you will be able to tender them either with a first round tender, a second round tender, or a first refusal tender. And you can set what you want those default contracts amount, contract amounts to be. Um, so the way it works is basically at the end of the season, I have a, a free agent I don't really want to let walk, uh, and I want to give him the... 4.75 mil first round tender. So I'll mark, instead of giving him a contract extension, I'll just tender him um, in the UI. And then after the season flips, after the coach carousel goes through, there's a period of time where all of the teams can bid on any of those restricted free agents that are out. They, they get their own stage. Uh, mainly I wanted a different stage so that we can turn it off if people don't want to deal with it um, or if they're their leagues are already running too long and they want to shorten the season or whatever, we'll, we'll allow them to turn that on or off. But the first stage of, of the RFA period will be people making bids on those free agents. If, if somebody else has a first round pick and they're willing to outbid for that player, then you know they'll put a bid in on him, cycle through the bids, the player will pick the offer they like the best. And then the second stage of RFA is basically the team that owns the player deciding if they want to match that contract that was offered to them or if they want to let the player walk and just collect their their tender. So they could, you know, in my case, if I tendered a guy for first round for 4.75, somebody else offers him 10 million, I might say, you know, I don't want to match that 10 million. I'll just take your first round pick, which is what you have to give up in addition to that contract. So it allows... Uh, it allows teams to do a little bit more realistic kind of contracts. It allows, oh, you know, a little bit of different style of player movement instead of just straight up um, free agency. Um, and again, with the matching and the tendering and the, the pick matching, um, it should it should make some interesting play styles. Right now, this is primarily for multiplayer league. I haven't. I haven't coded the part where the AI is smart enough to be able to deal with this. So for Pro Football 22, it may be something that's kind of multiplayer only versus uh, the others, but we still have time. So if I have time to expand it into a single player, I will, but I'm not going to commit to that just now. because There's lots of other things that, that we're still working on. Um, I'm going to go through. So Breeze brought up the NFL actually did go to a 17-week schedule. And so, of course, we followed suit. The game will have a, a 17-week schedule. Um, I am I have not looked at doing a conversion yet for teams that are currently on the 16-game schedule to go to the 17. So... Um, it may be something that teams or, or leagues are going to want to switch during the off season, just changing the league structure like we normally do, um, just like you would for expansion or whatever. In this case, you'd be switching to a new, a new schedule generator. But there may be a way for me to, to go in and tweak that automatically with a button or whatever, so that people don't have to go through the whole um, league structure change. Um, the the I did want to highlight that we that we did go to that 17 because we can and we want to try and keep up with with relative uh, modern formats. Uh, and there is a question about um, you know would the would the box score have a dark 
Well, one thing I want to, I've tried to clear up in the chat a little bit, but I, I want to say it is it's not, we're not having a, a, a toggable mode. You, you're not going to be able to choose between last year's look and this darker look. It's just going to be this darker look. I, I think that um, this looks better. I think it looks more modern. I think it's what uh, more people use now on their, you know, their applications on their desktop or on their phones. Um, it's just, you know, I think it's overall a better way of doing it. And it, it wasn't, um, I, I kind of mentioned this in the chat earlier, it wasn't just like one line of code that we typed in and, and flipped it. You know, it's, it's something we've got to go into every, I've got to go into every page. I've got to, you know, style everything on each page. Um, and, you know, and there's, there's, it's not, you know, there are some ways I can style multiple things at once or with a change, but it's not something that, you know, I, we could set up easily to flip back and forth, especially in the basketball games. And we want all the games to have the same look and feel. So, um, so it's, this is just going to be the look of the game this year. And I think, um, you know, I, I think this really, I think this looks better than, than what the 2021 games did. I'm really happy with how this is coming along. There will still be, uh, some, some tweaks and, and things like that to go, but I, I really am happy with, uh, with how this is looking. I think the colors pop so much better. Um, you know, and I think this is really going to be a nice improvement. Um, and you know, and, and as I said earlier, it, it, it's not just, you know, something I could go in and, and flip a switch and add a line of code. I've been working on this for weeks and weeks as Brooks knows, <laughs> as the updates kind of trickle into him, uh, you know, so that he can, you know, we can get the game to first access. Most of, most of Brooks, you know, his, his additions have been in and he's been working really hard, you know, for, for months on, on the new features, uh, you know, that he's been putting in and we've only shown you some of them. You're not going to get all the, the new stuff out of us tonight, uh, just some. But, uh, but this is something that I've been working on and uh, it will come to the college football game and both basketball games as well. So we'll be showing that off in uh, Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2022. Uh, once we start the, the the developer dynasties there, and um, as, as Radiant says, he prefers the dark color. There hasn't been anybody, and you know, before I started making this change or even talking to Brooks about it, I I started making the change to pro basketball, and showed you know some people you know some concepts for it and things like that, and then showed Brooks uh, to get his you know his feedback and stuff like that. There hasn't been one person who's told me they wish it was you know the light bright white screen staring back at them anymore so i, I think this is going to be a, a really well received and much needed change i think it's it's time to go uh you know modern here with with this stuff and and kind of go with what's uh kind of what's standard and, and what people uh like the most today yeah i i agree i think it's a little bit more tedious and a little bit more difficult a lot more difficult to to flip this style than, than I think people may realize or, or even appreciate, but it's also not just like flipping and inverting colors. It's, it's actually making sure that the layout still makes sense, that the colors are, are appropriate for all the screens and the contrasts are right. And that the design still is, uh, still looks good and still works on every page. And some of the pages, you know, you can kind of hide a lot of blemishes when it's just all white and black text. And now, <laughs> You know, we, we're trying to make sure that all of these things are still readable and still work well and, and those kinds of things. So, I mean, it, gladly still take more feedback. And um, and there is there actually is still a way within the game to theme the, the look and feel. I know there was somebody in the mod community that had gone in and, and come up with some different ways of, of overriding some of the styles and the themes. So we'll still leave that in there. There'll still be ways for people to turn it all green or all purple or whatever they want to do. Um, so we're not we're not going to completely abandon that. But I do like the, the, the darker um, theme approach or theme dark theme first approach. But with it, we make all the screens look good in dark mode. And then uh, rather than try and make a toggle or you know, all those things where you get the worst of all worlds. So I can appreciate the work that Gary's put into this. And, you know, as we find more screens and as he comes up with more ideas, I'm, I'm sure he'll continue to work to make them, make them look great. 
so that's uh, that's pretty much what we plan to uh, to discuss and talk about tonight. Um, I know uh, we got the, the seventeen game schedule in there that we had uh, to uh, you know kind of plan for tonight, but you know, we're happy to answer uh, questions and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I just I, I'm really excited for uh, for this version. Um, you know, and I know people will be asking when's first access, and uh, you know we have new viewers here. I know this is one of the the highest view counts we've had for our developer dynasty streams, and we've had a lot of new players come into the into the company over the the past year. Um, so just as a reminder for everybody, first access is our paid period before the game is actually finally released. You're able to purchase or pre-order the game. Uh, once you pre-order it, you get the latest versions of the beta. You get your code right away, and you can start you know playing the betas along the way until we have the uh you know the finished product a couple weeks after that point so we're closing in on that i know people want an exact date um, we don't have an exact date yet but it will not be very long uh, as you can see so much of the work has been done and a lot of new features are in and we're getting ready to begin some private internal testing and then the next step is first access so it will not be too long before you have the uh, opportunity to get your hands on this uh, at wolverinestudios.com with our first access program. You also uh, get a discount uh, if you're a returning customer. Uh, you know, you purchased Pro Football 21 from us last year, only from us. We can't do it from Steam. There's no way to verify it. But uh, if you buy it from us, we give you a, a bigger discount on uh, the 22 version, and we do that for all of our games. So we encourage you to purchase uh, your games directly from us. And we also are typically are able to give out a Steam key as well to anybody who pre-orders the game. So if you do prefer to play on Steam, you can still pre-order from us, play the beta uh, you know, through our version of it, and then when it's released on Steam, you can uh, grab the Steam key at that point and switch over to Steam if that's what you, uh, that's what you prefer. So uh, Brooks, is there anything else that, uh, that you want to cover before we wrap it up tonight? Uh, it's just a couple more things. So okay. Cybex just asked about, for the average fan, why would I upgrade? Why if Pro Football 21 or Pro Football 16 or whatever, why would I continue to upgrade every year? Why would I pick these different versions? I, and I completely understand that question, that line of thinking. Times are, are tough for some folks. And in some cases, they're not going to want to upgrade. They might not see the benefit of all these things. But at the same time, as developers, we continue to just push forward. We continue to come up with new features. We continue to improve behind the scenes things. We continue to improve UI things, um, game functions, AI decisions, you know, financial models, week 17 uh, or 17 game schedules, like all those things that make it where hopefully it's enticing enough to folks that, that they will be day one purchasers, that they will be first access purchasers. Um, and, and so it's on us to, to make the experience as good as we can. Um, but I completely understand if folks are really happy with previous versions, that's great too. I mean, that, I, I love when I hear that people have been playing these games for multiple years and that it still serves their purposes and, and they get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not one that's going to demand that people, you know, move on to the latest version. You know, if you're happy with what you have, then you know, we're tickled pink that, that you're getting that much enjoyment out of something that we built. So hopefully as, as these dev dynasties go on, we'll, we'll continue to add more things and we'll add that one feature that makes you go, wow, you know, that really is worth the purchase price alone this year. And I, I definitely will upgrade for that feature. Um, and some people might, you know, it might take them multiple features before they're sold, but that's, that's what drives us. That's what keeps us moving forward. And, uh, well, you know, we definitely keep that as a focus. The other thing I wanted to cover is what we started doing in the last couple of releases is doing a limited beta um, release. We found that sometimes first access can be a little overwhelming with the number of people that jump on the game all at once. And so we like to have like a, a small little power user kind of beta team. So if anybody's interested in getting you know, possibly a free copy of the game, possibly advanced copy of the game to, to help us, you know, test installers and test, you know, just all the different screens that have been touched. And, you know, they're even, you know, just willing to kind of look at things and make sure we haven't completely messed it up. 
um, send me a private message on our Slack channel because then I can add you specifically to a beta group that we'll start up. It's only it's only gonna be a small group, so don't be disappointed if if you don't get picked. But send me a quick message. Let me know, you know, what your experience is with the game, what you're looking to get out of it, how you think you can help with a beta program. Uh, maybe let me know what your computer situation is. Uh, I think we're finding that the the disparate kinds of hardware that are that's out there may actually be affecting some of the way some of these screens load and some of the way the game is played. Um, so we definitely want to get a good mix of of people with with you know slightly older hardware, people with high end hardware, you know, and all all in between. So if you're interested in helping us out and checking that out, it's not like I said, it's not part of first access. This would just be a an internal beta kind of thing. And send me a message on the on the Slack channel, and we'll we'll see about getting some folks added so we can get a little bit more advanced eyeballs on this thing. And we'll start that up in in the next week or two. So you have time, but you know I encourage you to. Join up if you're interested. If you got some testing skill, or you have a particular feature that you, know, you, th you still think you know wasn't working right in in PF21, then we definitely want to get some some eyeballs on those things specifically. So appreciate anybody who's who's got some time to to donate to that. Yep, and I I want to uh, go just uh, before we finish, kind of go back to what Brooks said about you know upgrading. We also after first access when the game is released we have a free demo for every game that is officially launched so if you're on the fence if you are you know maybe interested but you want to see it for yourself you'll be able to have you know a full seven day demo once we launch the game you can download it you can play it for yourself you can you know see it because it is important as brooks says we want to make sure that you know that, that you're happy with you know the the leaps in the game each year and if you're not and if you want to wait till the next year hey that's uh you know, that's up to you. That's your choice. Um, and But we, we do offer that free demo so you can, before you make a decision, not you can grab that demo once the game is launched, um, you know, and, and you can test it out for yourself and see if uh, if it measures up to what you're looking for. And by all means, keep coming back, you know, for the developer dynasties, uh, you know, watch what we're doing on our social media accounts, you know, we'll, you know releasing new pictures, new features, you know, the, the developer dynasties here on Twitch are a great chance for you to come and ask a question. Um, you know, like uh, like many of the uh, people in the chat have tonight. You know, it's it's a community. Our, our community is growing, but it's still very small. You know, compared to you know some large scale, you know, developers and, and publishers and stuff like that. Whereas you know, if you ask a question to one of those. You know, AAA companies, you'll be lucky if anybody ever sees it, let alone replies to you. Um, you know, we may not be able to reply to everybody, but we, we see pretty much everything that gets posted or gets asked. And, and uh, you know, we do our best to reply, you know, to anybody, any questions, any suggestions, any feedback. Um, you know, so you have a say here, you know, in, in, you know, an opportunity to get your voice heard and you know let us know what you're looking for what it would you know what's most important to you and if it fits with the game and it's something we can do and we have the time to do you know in the development cycle you know brooks definitely does you know his absolute best to try to get uh you know to, to uh, you know get in things that that individuals are looking for and you see it right here in the chat tonight with uh, with so many people who have made comments about just a couple of the new features that we talked about and they'll say, wow, I've been waiting for that. I've been looking for it. You know, I, I really hope to see that in the game at some point. And, you know, and now they're seeing uh, some of those things happen. So, you know, th there is a lot to be excited for here. Um, we're going to keep showing new stuff off in, in these developer dynasties. And uh, we hope you'll come back and see us again next Wednesday night at 8. And we'll, uh, we'll talk some more uh, Draft Day Sports Pro Football 2022. Uh, then, so thank you everybody for coming tonight, Brooks. Uh, any final words before we sign off? No, I appreciate everybody's support and all the all the viewers taking a look at this. And I hope to see you guys around our our Slack channels and on our forums and going along on this ride with us. All right, absolutely. Uh, you know, thank you everybody for coming back. We're uh, we're excited to get the Developer Dynasty series going again, and we will uh, see you next week. So make sure you're staying. Uh, you know, watching out for us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch. I mean, we're on everything, but 
uh, no TikTok. We're not doing any TikTok dancing here, okay? It's just just games, just uh, the best sports simulations that you can uh, that you can buy. And I, I don't have any uh, qualms about saying that. I think for franchise mode, uh, Wolverine Studios is where you want to go over any other game. So thanks, everybody, for uh, showing out so strong this week on our Twitch channel. And we'll see you back uh, next week. Let's get excited for another season of Draft Day Sports Pro Football 22. And uh, 